draft housing strategy. The housing strategy has been founded on a comprehensive evidence base and database um, of information that we presented to you in December last year called the housing needs analysis. Um, and so the strategy follows that work. The strategy seeks to address um, in sh short, medium and long term ways and in um, a raft of actions the current housing challenge that Noosa Shire is facing. So we are very pleased to present it to you today. Um, it has actions um, <coughs> relating to Council's regulatory role. It has actions around Council as an advocate. It recommends actions as Council as the planner um, and, and you know, a raft of things that Council can, can do. Um, we often hear that um, housing isn't really local government's role, but um, we, this strategy pretty much says it's everyone's role. It's going to take <coughs> everyone um, to have uh, a seat at the table, some skin in the game, if we're genuinely going to address the housing challenge in our community. So um, there are some bold recommendations in this strategy uh, and it's going to take some strong leadership t to see it through over the next two, three, four, five years. Um, so we're very pleased to recommend it to you. Uh, we are recommending it to you as a draft for the purposes of community engagement. Uh, with a proposal that it goes out for a period um, throughout July after the school holidays for public consultation. Um, it also uh, has a community engagement plan attached to it which outlines a, a raft of activities that we're proposing to do through that um, consultation pre period. <coughs> we're also recommending that Council establish a housing stakeholder reference group and attached to the report is a draft terms of reference for that stakeholder reference group. And in the body of the report is a recommendation around the membership of that stakeholder reference group, uh, as well as recommending that the mayor uh, and, a, and a councillor be identified today for membership on that reference group. So uh, thank you, councillors. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Kim? Um, I will move um, a recommendation on page three of the agenda of the change to item D. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Stewart Mayor as the elected representatives and um, the following councillors in rotating representation as the elected representatives to be on the housing reference group. Councillor Stockwell, 1st of July 2022 to the 30th of December 2022. Councillor Finzel, 1st of January 2023 to 30 June 2023. Councillor Lawrenston, 1st of July 2023 to end of council term. Yes. Question, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, when we were discussing this rotation and the uh, appointments, there was a suggestion that uh, councils would receive a standing invitation as observers as well. Is that? Yeah, that was my understanding, um, Councillor Walkie, and I believe we didn't have to put um, a recommendation up for that, but that is absolutely correct. So all councillors, like <coughs> we do with our business round table um, and our King King Quarry um, round table, all councillors are invited to be observers. I'm happy to second that, Madam Thank you. <coughs> well, it gives me great pleasure to move the motion before us. It comes with much anticipation, an unprecedented need, and a willingness of all to support. First, I'd like to thank Kim Rawlings and Rowena Skinner and all of our staff who have worked tirelessly in the formation of this report, all executives who have had input as well as our CEO. I firmly believe that all of Noosa Council stand firmly aligned on wanting to do something needing to do something in this incredibly important space of housing affordability. At a very foundational level, housing is the responsibility of the state. However, we all have a role to play. As Kim said, everyone has a role. And Noosa Council's draft housing strategy firmly sets out our role. It's proactive, it's visionary, forward thinking, and a leader in its field. <coughs> Kim and her team are to be acknowledged for their incredible work in this area. We greatly value and appreciate it. We are facing, in this country and in this state, a housing crisis. We all know that. This draft document for us puts Noosa clearly at the forefront of every other country, <coughs> if not our state government, in this space. We haven't finished, though. In fact, we've just begun. And this document is a draft. It is now up to our community to have their input, their say, and I would encourage them to do so. So all industry sectors, all residents and all stakeholders. Now is your chance to be a part of something we can all achieve together. As I said, this report is long coming. In 2015, the newly released Noosa Social Strategy highlighted that median household incomes in Noosa were well below the Queensland average 
and that median home purchases and rental prices were well above the state averages. Back in 2015, some seven years ago, this same report showed that many of our residents are struggling to meet increases in costs of living and shortages of affordable housing and limited housing diversity were contributing to homelessness and incidents of residents sleeping rough. The draft strategy before us today comes before Council for endorsement. It is the first specific housing strategy for Noosa Shire. The strategy sets a clear vision and establishes outcomes <coughs> and an action plan for Noosa Council about accommodating residents now and into the future. In ratifying the 2020 plan, Noosa plan, I'd like to acknowledge Councillor Finzel, who highlighted specifically in her amendment, monitoring the effectiveness of the plan in light of social and affordable housing, something unanimously supported by all of us. Councillor Stockwell, I know this is close to your heart and something that you have championed over many years, and this should be a satisfying day for you too. When we agree on something, you know it's a winner. In fact, as I said, all <laughs> councillors around this table are united in their approach their care and their willingness to do what we can to do our bit. The mayoral minute unanimously endorsed in 2020 was the beginning of a long process. It was and has been the most aggressive step that any council has taken in this space, provided the foundation for our housing needs assessment, <coughs> a technical report on the context of housing and households in Noosa Shire. The housing needs assessment, along with other council strategies and plans, have important <coughs> housing strategy. This is strategic leadership by all of us at its core. Which brings me to this document, what it does, what it plans for, and the outcomes we hope to achieve through the implementation. The housing strategy seeks to set a clear plan for the housing in Noosa Shire through to 2041. Its purpose is to set a clear vision and establish key outcomes and an action plan for Noosa Shire Council about accommodating residents now and into the future. It is a statement to the community of how committed this council is, how we are also committed to being part of the housing solution. Our vision includes facilitating different housing types and styles to ensure <coughs> people's housing needs are catered for, regardless of age, mobility, household structure or budget. Prioritising affordable living for key workers. We all know how important, that, how important that is. Facilitating housing outcomes such as specific to each local area, considering their needs. Ongoing engagement and advocacy with state and federal governments. Encouraging greater public and private investment in more social and affordable housing partnering with developers or registered community and or registered community housing providers. The list goes on. <coughs> Exploring rate concessions for properties owned or leased on a long-term basis by registered housing providers. Exploring concessions on development costs. Planning scheme amendments and policy development that supports real change and outcomes. Community engagement models and tools that keep the Noosa community involved and supportive of activity and actions arising from this strategy. <coughs> the outcomes of this strategy are a game changer for our most at risk, our vulnerable, our workers, our businesses, <coughs> our economy, and our community at large. I've spoken about the draft housing strategy, but the motion before us also asks that we authorise the CEO to establish a housing reference group to work with council <coughs> on the implementation of the housing strategy and a range of housing issues. This is the first housing reference group that we have established. It's the chance to bring all stakeholders in, all industry players in, that include our state member, Department of Communities, Q Shelter, Community Housing Association, Registered <coughs> Community Housing Providers, Residential Care Providers, Business and Tourism Sector, Permanent Rental Property Managers and Local Housing Developers and Planning Consultants. A broad church which will provide an important forum for ideas and discussion based on experience. The responsibilities of this group are vast. It is not, however, a decision-making body, but rather it will assist Nursa Council in the implementation of the housing strategy and associated actions through sharing of information and learnings from on the ground experience. The reference group is another string to our bow in our plight to address the challenges, but also the opportunities ahead. All things are on the table to address this incredible need. And I'd ask everyone to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Thank, <coughs> you, Ma thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I support this, um, this uh, body of work um, and this <coughs> document going out for public consultation. I think the interesting points for me, and it's made clear in the report, is that it outlines Council's roles it can play in this, this space in advocacy, partnering, regulating and facilitating, but Council is not going to become a provider of social or community housing. That's made very clear. Um, the, any social and public housing, to put it in a bigger context, that will be added to the, the stock of estimated to be about 395 dwelling 
units or homes already existing in Noosa Shire Council. And according to the planning staff, the estimated increase in the population, Noosa's population, is only estimated to be in the couple of hundreds. So it's not going to blow out Noosa's population cap. It's also, just to manage expectations, it's not going to be the silver bullet, but Noosa is going to be doing its part in, <coughs> in helping in stepping up in this space. There are interesting recommendations or proposals for me, uh, very sensible ones, that, um, uh, that is preserving low, medium and high density residential zones for permanent residents, limiting accommodation businesses to tourist accommodation zones, providing both incentives and regulation to ensure new <coughs> unit developments include an element of social or community housing, ensuring social housing doesn't occur in remote locations or on poor quality land prone to flooding or fire away from public transport or services, or in industrial estates where the clash of expectations and land uses would be to the detriment of both the residents and business owners. But it does acknowledge that it's proposed <coughs> that any live and work arrangements in industrial estates where there's no detriment to either parties will be considered. It also considers opportunities for tiny homes on land zone for community facilities or relocatable home um, parks. Um, and it also opens up the opportunities for second households to be accommodated in secondary dwellings or properties. And there's been a lot of, um, uh, a lot of clarities required around that, that area. There's also proposals for Kiwi <coughs> Street and Lake McDonald Drive. Um, and I encourage, um, any, this, this report is available online as of, uh, as of uh, last week. Um, there's still going to be several weeks before the official public consultation begins and I would encourage anyone who's interested in this work to download the report, start reading it, understanding it, send through any questions you may have and if you're going to make a submission, get a head start. Thank you. Thank you. That's all um, I'd like to move an amendment. Um, Seek Noosa Shire Community feedback on the draft theme housing strategy for a period of four weeks from the 10th of July 2022. Maybe to second that, <coughs> um, I do so because uh, <coughs> you know, this is a huge issue for our community. Um, I initially started with a six week consultation period because of the significance of the report. Um, but I accept that um, this draft is already publicly available and the consultation period is going to commence after <coughs> the school holidays. Um, so in order for genuine and meaningful consultation, um, I propose in four, four weeks um, and not the three weeks. So I hope you support the extension. Does anyone have any questions? I do. Kim, do you foresee any uh, any challenges of extending the period of consultation three to four weeks? Four staff. <coughs> Through the chair, no, Councillor Jurisdic, that's that's fine. Okay. Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to this? Councillor. Yeah, I will speak. <coughs> well, I'm going to support the extension, but I'm going to do it in a way that raises a challenge for the staff. And the challenge we've got in this consultation is engaging the most impacted demographic, the most important people we're planning for. Have in your mind, who do we normally get involved in consultation? Are they generally over 55 and generally homeowners? <coughs> Those homeowners may have seen a minimal <coughs> increase in their market value of their property over the last two years. Because if that's who we are going to engage, there's some research done by the state government recently. And the research says that 55 plus in South East Queensland are in a category they call resistant to change. They're homeowners, they place focus on their local areas and they're generally negative sentiment towards change. <coughs> and this strategy just post change. But then you look at the next one. Is it 35 to 54 year olds that we're really targeting here? And they're the disengaged and neutral. And they're renters and homeowners. They care about the environment. Their focus is on the local area, the lifestyle and their family. But they're not interested unless they're directly impacted by something. In the consultation, we're going to really engage that group. But the most important ones, the 18 to 34 year olds, the ones that are supportive of change, 
who are mostly renting or just entering that market who are looking at this huge increase in market value and saying, I'll never own a house. Can you imagine when you were 18 to 35, if you were looking at a future and saying, I'll never own a house, because that's what a lot of them are doing. And they're positive about their lifestyle, <coughs> they're interested in the environment, and they're positive to change. So I support the extra week, so we can have a think about what extra can we do to engage 18 to 34 year olds. How can we get those 55 plus to spend 5% of their time thinking about this strategy from self-interest and 95% thinking about the next generation and how they can assist this community go forward? I will ask a question, um, and it probably goes to some of the points that Councillor Stockwell raised. Um, there's the Housing Stakeholder Reference Group proposed. How will some of the interests of, of, of the younger demographic that Councillor Stockwell um, uh, raised um, be captured in the Housing Stakeholder Reference Group? Um, th through the chair, uh, we are um, <coughs> we are working with a uh, expert engagement um, and consultation agency. Um, so we've just uh, procured them to come on board with us, um, and uh, early next week we'll be starting to look at the range of ways that we do engage various groups across the uh, across the shire. So, uh, you know, looking at, looking at you know, clever ways to do that. Um, we ha we we've the, the membership we've put forward for the stakeholder reference group. We've tried to do that in a way that um, there's, rep <coughs> there's representation of all of all of those issues. You know, we've got community housing providers at the table. You know, very aware of what um, you know the, mo the most vulnerable people in our community need from a housing perspective. You know, we've already been working with them, and they've been able to share <coughs> a lot of insights um, that have helped inform the strategy. Um, where we're also, you know, we've got um, people who are working in the sort of permanent rental space, you know, uh, and Rowena's has had quite a bit of contact with them, and they've been able to share with us what's going on from a, from a permanent rental rental market. So, you know, we, we do feel like we've we've um, tried to cover uh, the cross section of the community, um, but you know, we're, we're all, always open to kind of other you know, cle clever ways. Um, I've got teenagers. Um, so on my household's sort of full of teenagers all the time. So, you know, often I'll say to them, take these things to school, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, we've, you know, we'll be talking to schools and, you know, if we can get um, <coughs> teenagers to engage from that perspective, we're, you know, we're open to, you know, any ideas and suggestions as to how, how best to do that so that we get a comprehensive response and we get the responses from the people who are, <coughs> are really, you know, feeling these issues uh, now and into the future. Thank you. I'll move another amendment, and uh, <coughs> and that's a motion that um, approve the necessary draft housing strategy provided in attachment one with the changes noted below, and. The changes are, one, the wording in section 6.4.4 be amended to read, work with the owners of approved aged care sites that do not require the clearing of remnant vegetation to encourage optimum outcomes and their timely development. <coughs> For the purposes of discussion, I'll take a look. <coughs> the, uh, the amendment is um, aimed at um, Reinforcing a, a, the recent notice of motion where we reviewed the uh, a, a approved aged care site, uh, which has, which would require the clearing of remnant vegetation of high conservation value. <laughs> now, the action, as stated, would suggest that staff work with them in partnership to get them built. What I'm suggesting is um, if aged care sites have an approval, which are, in my opinion no longer uh, meet what we would see as modern standards, and that is required to clear remnant vegetation, that we we don't want the housing strategy to actually get staff to work in partnership. Uh, we want them to work in partnership to bring forward uh, those developments that don't require a, a loss of the environment to achieve the social housing outcome. 
Um, and the other one was there was uh, another word change where is, uh, the original wording talked about ensuring optimum and timely development. I don't think we can ensure, I think we can only encourage. I have a, a question. I'm just wondering if, if this, the wording achieves what Councillor Stockwell is trying to achieve. So I'll ask a question. Are you saying you would like to <coughs> start to work with the owners of approved aged care sites that do not, aged care sites, um, to encourage optimum outcomes that do not require the clearing of remnant vegetation and their timely development? Because the way it reads here at the moment, I'm wondering, would that exclude you working with all aged care providers, the council working with all aged care providers? Are you trying to avoid the clearing of the vegetation? Or only, you're only suggesting council works only with the aged care providers that will not be clearing the vegetation? Uh, the latter. Uh, I believe that in my <coughs> there's only three uh, sites that are approved or identified for aged care. Uh, one is on Grass Street Court, which this probably relates to. Uh, the other is on McKinnon Drive, where all the clearing has already occurred. And the third is a site that's zoned for aged care community use um, on in Karoi, uh, Ferrell Road, and the main road in the Downs. Um, and uh, I think they're the only three aged care sites. Palm Lakes. Oh, and yes, and the Palm Lakes development in Karoi as well has another stage which had an aged care facility on it. Sorry, I'm sorry. Could, you, could you spend more time explaining what you're hoping to achieve with this? I'm not understanding. Sure. So um, maybe I'll wait. I'll wait till you speak to it. Yeah. I think I have. Okay. But you got, so yeah, just clearly, uh, there's two lots in Grass Street Court. One's cleared. Yes. Um, we could still work with them to try and get that built as soon as possible, uh, but it wouldn't be asking staff to. Uh, as was originally proposed to, to work <coughs> with the developer to try and get uh, the aged care facility built on the other lot, which is currently not cleared. So I'd be saying working with lots that don't require the clearing of remnant vegetation. Working with aged care providers Forest, yeah. that don't require, but, but alternatively, similarly, not working with aged care providers that do require the, on clearing, those sites, yes. the clearing of. Yes. Okay, so help in one, Partnership in one aspect, non-partnership in another aspect, depending on whether they're clearing or not. Yes. Yeah. I think that'd be the way to put it. That, if I could clarify, um, we clearly showed that we, in the recent motion passed by council, that we wanted to change, we wanted the staff to consider a change to the planning scheme to ensure the community had a say on the uncleared section of Grass Street Court. I think it'd be counter to that recommendation to then go away and work behind the scenes to try and get them to bring forward the development on that side. Question, are you bringing forward this particular amendment to cope, <coughs> to deal with one specific development uh, to the uh, potential, <coughs> and, and, or is this meant to be a general catch-all it's worded to be general, to establish a principle, but as I said, from my understanding of the current approvals, it will <coughs> relate to one development site. Okay, I'll speak, I'll speak to the amendment. I appreciate what Councillor Sock was trying to do, but the, the wording to me at the moment is exclusionary, mm. and it will, it will it'll bar council staff from working from applicants seeking to work in the aged care space. And I don't know if that's a healthy thing. Um, although I do know you've got the word approved aged care sites there. But despite that, I prefer a more inclusionary <coughs> approach because I believe um, the best outcomes come through partnerships and working collaboratively with applicants uh, within the bounds of the law to a reasonable extent. And this would, in my mind, in my reading, uh, prevent council staff from working with uh, owners of aged care facilities. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Uh, happy to consider a, a rewording if, <coughs> yeah. I'm gonna ask a question to staff if I may. Outside of the scope of this, 
Uh, are there other sites potentially identified where aged care could take place other than the three with, within the planning scheme or within forward uh, thinking of the, uh, of the, uh, the planning scheme? Um, where aged care sites could be considered uh, other than the three mentioned by Councillor Stockwell? Um, <coughs> uh, three Madam Chair, I wouldn't rule out uh, aged care on other sites, particularly as since the Royal Commission, the model is to go for smaller, more intimate, domestic <coughs> scale residential care. So you could have quite small residential care and it could be otherwise. That's, what called, uh, that's a second question following on. That's why I just wanted to, to, to um, um, uh, um, have, the, have the two parts of the question now. I forgot what's the part of the questions. Um, So uh, oh, I know what it was. Um, that this this uh, amendment and even clause six point four point four, a six point four four works work with the owners of sites approved for aged care. Where within this strategy do we look at other opportunities for aged care facilitation? Because <coughs> this only talks about approved aged care sites. So it doesn't address. Uh aged care or residential care specifically on any other sites. We do have one other site which is zoned for it, which hasn't got a development approval in place, but it's zoned for it. Um, I, I guess we are looking for opportunities for any sort of housing choice. Uh, and when we have looked at council land assets or privately owned land, um, we've looked holistically for any sort of housing choice, be it residential care, group housing, multiple housing, um, disability housing, so any sites that would lend themselves to uh, a form of housing which broadens local housing choice beyond domestic ha detached houses. All right, so I guess the question I'm asking, and I'm not sure if I've got the answer there, is there anywhere else within the housing strategy where we have the capacity to look at the needs for, uh, I think you did cover it, for aged care or any other type of, uh, of, of clustered type of housing arrangements that, uh, that may be put forward. <coughs> Councillor, there is somewhere that talks about, um, uh, in 6.4, we specifically look at development and redevelopment for housing that is diverse and meeting varied and challenging needs of people across their life. Um, so that, uh, I'm not sure that there's a particular action, a particular action that addresses residential care, but through that, um, that table, under that point, we're doing just that. Broadly covered, yeah. sufficient to cover. Thank you. That's all I want to clarify. <coughs> um, were you anticipating um, talking about clearing remnant, remnant vegetation and so forth when you were thinking of doing this housing strategy? Because it seems to me mixing apples and oranges. Uh, no, not specifically. Um, when we've looked at this housing strategy and we've looked at um, various sites that are that are capable of, of potentially accommodating whether it's residential care or aged care or other, as Rowena said, other forms of housing. Um, we consider what the land constraints of those sites are and whether or not there is some capability of those sites suitable for housing. So in a broader context in terms of considering uh, what's on land and what the constraints are, whether it's environmental or flood or, or whatever, we've, we've <coughs> considered it at a strategic <coughs> sense, um, but not specifically in this instance. But um, for the CEO, considering that we're really focusing on basically grass tree court here, <coughs> yeah, we opening ourselves up to a legal situation where where we're just just focusing on, on one development. <coughs> um, through the chair, Councillor Wagner, um, ultimately that that is a decision. For the, the council table, while um, Councillor um, Stockwell has indicated that um, th this 
would focus one particular area <coughs> that is broad in its approach. So it um, does look at uh, any future sites that may include remnant edge clearing as well too. So it, it does, um, yes, deliver an impact to a, a current development, um, but however it is delivered intentionally on a broad basis as well, um, so that it does restrict other developments from getting into that situation where remnant bed would be cleared to be able to achieve this outcome. Um, ultimately a matter for, for those external to us to be able to see if, if they feel that that is some sort of disadvantage. Um, but for this particular process that we're undertaking <coughs> and amendments to the Act, um, it, it really is a matter for Council to be able to consider at the table. I'll, I'll speak to the amendment. Um, I am going to support it. And I'm going to reference on page <coughs> 25, um, A6.2.6, ensure growth in housing and population does not adversely impact on the character, lifestyle and environment enjoyed by residents. And I'll go down to the third, um, second uh, dot point. Growth is not at the expense of sustainable care of the environment and management of waste. I think the amendment actually reflects the values that we hold really important in this, and I'm happy to support. Thanks, Councillor Robinson. Anyone else like to speak to Councillor Stockwell's well, just <coughs> the, the other side of the coin, which you say, it already says that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that we will be looking at maintaining you know, our environment standards and so forth. And this seems to be just double speaking that, that's, mm -hmm. that concerns me. Question for staff. If a site has an approved development proposal, and that includes the clearing of remnant vegetation in that, um, in that approval, um, wouldn't that be the most relevant document with regard to development approval with regard to clearing of vegetation? <coughs> yes, the development approval would prevail. And, what, and as such would override any uh, wording in a housing strategy such as this? <coughs> Well, a development approval gives rights to develop land. Um, that can't be revoked, that can't be taken away. Um, if that exists, then that the um, owner, applicant of that land has the right to develop that land. Um, this, the intention of um, what the strategy was um, seeking to achieve is, you know, partnerships underpin this strategy. It's right throughout the strategy. It's partnerships with our community housing providers, it's partnership with the development industry, it's partnership <coughs> with providers of the housing, types of housing we need, from residential aged care to um, small housing. It, you know, partnerships underpin this. So the, the, the action was in the spirit of uh, partnerships. Thank you. I'll speak to the amendment. I'm not going to support the amendment, because uh, I think what the housing strategy does is gives us broad overviews and not down to specifics and semantics about individual sites. So as a result of that, I think the, uh, the housing strategy speaks for itself. I'm happy to, uh, to, this is a draft going out for public consultation. I'm happy to see if the public come back with um, um, their concerns addressed here. But as far as the broad overview of the, the strategy and the opportunity for partnerships and the like, and, uh, and working towards mutually agreeable <coughs> outcomes uh, that, uh, that help facilitate uh, the housing needs of the, uh, the region, I won't be supporting the, uh, the amendment. Just to <coughs> clarify something you said, Kim, you're saying this amendment wouldn't, wouldn't prevent any landholder from <coughs> clearing the land uh, if they have those rights under the planning scheme and the planning act. So it wouldn't prevent that? That's right. If they've, got, if they've got a development approval in place that allows them to clear the land for a particular use, this wouldn't yeah. prevent that. It would only perhaps stop staff <coughs> from working with them for a, a good outcome, despite their rights. That's my understanding of the intention of the amendment. Yeah. Can I ask a question, Kim? Um, the Planning Act, um, in its objectives, are we looking at making amendments to include that um, one of our objectives is to provide affordable housing, or is it already in there? Uh, we are looking, the strategy does make recommendation that council does uh, explore um, amending its planning scheme 
um, to uh, include the provision of, of affordable housing, a range of affordable housing models in its planning scheme. So yes, it does recommend making some amendments to the planning scheme. This strategy in itself doesn't amend the scheme, that's a separate process and would need to go through a separate process and will, would need to come back to council before state sign off and public consultation. But the strategy does recommend <coughs> that council um, consider making those amendments to include it into the planning scheme. Would anyone else like to speak to Council Stoller's amendment? Council, yeah. I just have a question. Um, I don't know who to direct it to. I'm just wondering about, like, as council workers, maybe it's you, Scott, are we to be impartial? We're here today to, you know, engage community about development of potential housing because we've got a crisis. <coughs> In any way, like, would this maybe obstruct or limit at council's responsibility to provide impartial advice to people coming forward for development applications or discussions? Um, through the Mayor, Councillor Finzel, no, it, it wouldn't. It's, um, it wouldn't restrict anybody coming to council, but it, it would limit what we can consider um, would be the advice that I would provide. I'll ask the question, which I might, might, might answer it in another way. How many currently approved aged care sites do we have that may be impacted by this? Um, we have, we have, there's three different approvals. There is also a fourth property that's zoned. One of the approvals is over two different parcels. Um, so there's three approvals totaling four lots. There's a fifth property that's zoned that could accommodate. But being not approved, they wouldn't come under the consideration here. So as far as approved goes, there are only three currently approved aged care sites that may be impacted by the wording here. Thank you. And under this amendment, uh, if this was approved, this would prevent staff from working with the owners of those particular aged care uh, providers uh, in the interest of getting optimum outcomes <coughs> and timely development? Um, I, th I think the wording is somewhat awkward in that it would put you have the owner of one of the owners owns two parcels one of which would rely on clearing of remnant vegetation and one wouldn't. The, that wording would potentially restrict us from working with that owner, regardless of which side. Mm. And if um, a future <coughs> owner uh, was to put in an application uh, that may involve, uh, they have the rights to clear veg to site an aged care, um, staff would not be able to work with them in the interest of optimum outcomes, which may mean <coughs> saving w as much of the remnant vegetation as possible that remains on the site outside of their development rights. Would it be a fair assessment? Would it, would it, no, it's, a, a, it's an argument disguised as a question. I know Councillor from Wilkie doesn't like that. Councillor Wilkie, do you have an actual question? I do, I do. So um, uh, if, if a, another applicant put in, a, if someone put in an application and it did involve the clearing of remnant vegetation, which is their right, if we approve this, would that prevent staff from working with them to encourage optimum outcomes and timely development because it involves the clearing of remnant vegetation. I don't believe that this would prevent staff from working with owners. Uh, this is specifically instructing us to work with particular owners. It's not precluding us to working with anyone else or prohibiting staff to work <coughs> with anyone else. I just have a question, and I guess it's to Councillor Stockwell. Is the intent of this intent, is your intention to add that like as a dot point in attachment two? It's an amendment. Uh, like what's, what, I'm just trying to understand, because sure. you've got, for the purpose of community engagement in consultation with the communities in relation to attachment two, so what's your, what's your, I don't understand mm. your intent. It's just sure, the, the, the current actions, um, and I haven't got it in front of me, but it, it, I can think it reads, work with the owners of approved aged care sites um, 
Yeah. To ensure optimum outcomes and they're timely developed. Are delivered in a timely manner. And delivered in a timely manner. My intention is to reword that to say um, that this partnership will be extended to those sites that don't require clearing, other than those sites that require clearing for remnant vegetation. So you're, you're looking at changing the wording, Councillor Stockwell? Did you say? You're looking at changing the wording to make it help us understand um, what you mean? I would be welcome. For those who have better literary skills, to suggest a change to to uh, avoid some of the unintended interpretations that have come forward, but I can't do it as a mover. Well, we can ready. lose can it. I, and then it can I work. throw maybe this change of wording to Brian and ask whether it achieves the intent of his amendment? So work, so proactive uh, work with the owners of sites approved of aged care to ensure. Optimum outcomes are delivered in a timely are delivered in a timely manner, provided there is no clearing of remnant vegetation. If that clarifies it, I'm happy to. Well, I have another question. <laughs> we just heard that um, this doesn't stop staff working with any applicant. So my question is, what's the purpose of it? Mm, yeah. What's <coughs> uh, the the purpose and if you is it's under a, a section which is uh, about partnerships approaches and this and where's I'm, that wait a I'll just if you if just bear with me page 27 6.4.4 Rich but that's not good what Brian's alluding to um, housing and changing needs and 6.4 and it's yeah. about partnering and advocating. It's not about our statutory responsibilities. So this action is everything outside of our statutory responsibilities. And I'm saying on those sites that require the clearing of remnant vegetation, <coughs> we don't ask staff to go the extra burden of trying to partner with them. Sorry, where is that? Under 6.4.4? Yes, it says the action partner and advocate. Well, so, on the document. <coughs> okay, so you're saying you don't partner or advocate, you don't partner with or advocate for owners of approved aged care sites. So, you're saying partner or advocate with owners of approved care sites, only owners of the approved care sites that do not require the clearing of blah, blah, blah. Yes. Okay. Look, I'd be happy with that because it's, it's cl clearer to me what you're actually So would you like to stop that slowly so the Minister Secretary and if the meeting agrees we can okay. change? Okay. Um, the change would be partner with or, and advocate for... Point of, point of order, Council Madam Chair. Is, I've got my, my understanding is we should be voting on this as the amendment stands without trying to change the wording and if it's successful yeah, or otherwise true. we should uh, um, then have the opportunity to make a make a further amendment. I don't believe we should be changing wording on the run to something that's been moved and seconded. Okay. As the seconder, I don't, don't approve okay. it. Okay. okay. All right, we'll, we'll continue with the original and... <coughs> oh, look, I'm, I'm happy for this to amendment to be lost I'm and we get something yes. that actually yes. represents what he's we trying have, to say. We have, um, Anyone else have to speak to this? Councillor Kinsley, would you like to speak to this amendment? Uh, well, I'm just, I won't, wouldn't support this amendment because I'm not actually clear on the intent and what the necessary outcomes um, that Councillor Stockwell <coughs> is trying to reach with the amendment. Um, so, yeah, I won't be supporting it as it stands. Okay. Councillor Stockwell, would you like to close? Uh, no, I'll wait for the next okay. amendment. All right. Well, is everyone, have we taken that to the vote then? Or we'll yeah. take the original to the vote and then we can... But everybody's going to vote it out. But you haven't said a comment either. It doesn't have to. Everybody's going to not vote it out. Oh, you don't have to. We're going to change that. We'll vote to a vote now. All in favour of amendment number two? Right, that's lost unanimously. I'm not doing that. Okay, so would you like to try amendment number three, Councillor Stockwell? Um. I can't, Madam Mayor. So that the wording be changed to the Council partner with and advocate for approved aged care sites 
to encourage. So the owners are out. Yeah. With oh, sorry, partner with the own oh. owners. Well, that's what was. The yeah, yeah. To pa to partner to partner with and advocate for owners of approved aged care sites to encourage optimum outcomes and timely development. Is it providing? Yeah. Sap sites do not require the clearing of remnant vegetation. Mm -hmm. That was better than the one I wrote at seven o'clock this morning. Yeah. <coughs> that was the problem. Uh, do you have a second for, for amendment number three? Sure. No. No? Okay. Would anyone else like to second this? I can't. No, I can't either. Councillor Finkel or Melina? Bear in mind. I will second it for, for the base purpose. Well, okay, thank you, Councillor Wigner. Is second with that? Councillor I, I do so. Is What we're talking <coughs> about in this particular action is going above and beyond what we tried to do as a health and sister. And it's saying we, and the, the intent is to get to that point at the end, which is the timely development. And what I'm saying is, I would not like staff to spend <coughs> time trying to bring forward to get more timely development on sites that require the clearing of native vegetation, particularly if they're historic approvals. I believe that we should be doing our minimum stats requirements and no more. I don't support trying to bring forward developments which I believe no longer meet what we would currently require under the current planning scheme and no longer um, um, meet what is, I think, an acceptable standard. And I also think it's important to clarify, um, as Councillor um, Millian suggested, that we're not going down this housing at all costs. We are paying respects to the fundamental principles of what makes Noosa different. If you think it is appropriate for the staff to go in and work with the developer to try and bring forward the clearing of remnant vegetation of high conservation significance, then don't vote against the amendment. If you think it's okay that the staff go away and start advocating for the timely development of the <coughs> sites that require clearing vegetation, to don't vote for it. So it's really clear. It's just saying to staff, we're happy for you to work with sites, but we don't want you to be helping develop an application if we think it's in an area that is going to be against the community's interest. I've got a question for the CEO. Um, <clears throat> is this the way that council would normally operate to give direction to council staff without any workshop back or staff saying we need support or council to make a decision around you know our time and how we manage our planning department? Mm -hmm. It feels to me like this is a bit of a on the run. Mm -hmm. um, through the Mayor Council of Fimzel, um, ultimately the, the direction that's set by this table is um, for me as the CEO to be able to undertake. Um, so by <coughs> majority, the council table, whether a matter has been workshopped or not, or time has been spent or not, is a decision for the council to be able to make. But once the council makes a decision by majority, it's my role as the CEO to undertake that, regardless of the process. Officers are here to be able to provide reports and advice based on their technical experience. Um, but this council, as representatives of the community, are the ones that will make the decision. That decision that's made by majority um, is my role and responsibility to carry that out through the administration. Thank you. <coughs> there is a reason I didn't second this. Uh, it's because I didn't like, didn't like it the first time and I like it just as little the second time. Um, I appreciate the intent of what you're trying to do here, Brian, but I don't think this is the way to do it. Oh, yeah. um, there are sites that staff have identified that are currently approved and other sites potentially that are. I don't know whether they need remnant vegetation cleared. How much re remnant vegetation? What if one tree needs to be moved? Does that prevent them from, from doing it? I think it's, it's a bold statement and it's a bold uh, uh, a concept, but I don't think it works in the in the realms of the planning scheme. I think the sites that have been chosen by the planning scheme have gone out for public consultation. The community has approved these sites for these things, and we've got to acknowledge that they are, they sit in the planning scheme. Staff work with the applicant, who has every right to turn around and put an application in for an aged care facility on a site that's been designated as such, to work around the parameters and the challenges of that site to deliver an outcome. And I think our staff do that admirably on every application that comes before them. They challenge 
the developer wherever they can to minimise the amount of remnant vegetation that, uh, that is removed. And I appreciate the work they put in uh, in that regard. But once sites are identified and then the planning scheme, I think that, uh, it's the development application and what the developer goes to put forward in that regard that needs to be assessed, not whether there's a tree of remnant vegetation or the elements of remnant vegetation to be managed or not managed uh, in that process. Thank you, Councillor Chris. I have a question. Um, maybe I'm missing something, but we're looking at a housing strategy. Um, and the housing strategy is to incentivise developers to enter into the space, provide accessible housing, um, social housing, um, and be part of this solution. So I like the amendment. And, and my, sorry, so my question is, um, this amendment is only applicable, if, if I've read this right, this amendment's only applicable if an owner of an aged care facility is requesting bonus provisions or, um, or decrease in GMA. Have I read that correctly? No. No, so uh, unfortunately, Councillor Lawrence, and that's not that linkage is not required for this action. This action specifically um, sits under an objective that reads um, development and redevelopment for housing is diverse, meeting varied, varied and changing needs of people across their life. So the, the you know bonus provisions, development incentives, yes, that is captured in the housing strategy under another objective. But this objective has a number of actions under it that relate to planning for and the provision of a varied range of housing needs across the lifespan, which is, you know, and one of those is we have some existing approved aged care sites. Yeah. That is a housing need in our community. Yeah. Um, going back to the principle of partnering, this action is <coughs> to re reflect, let's partner to get those housing outcomes. Councillors, not well. Can I, I just have a question then for staff um, through the chair? It seems in the in what way will this help staff do their jobs better at a technical level or whatever level? Do they identify that this will help them advocate and partner more efficiently and better to get the outcomes that we're striving for today? Um, the the action was intended, we have uh, at least, well we, we actually have three approvals that have been sitting there for a long time, three approved residential care facilities that have been approved for some time um, for any range of reasons they haven't advanced. Um, and this was about staff being able to actually approach the owners and say, what is the hold up? What, what, it, what is happening at your end that you have not done this development yet? Is there a hold up? Uh, what do we need to discuss? So it was about sort of talking to them and proactively encouraging them to move on their proposal. Do they need to redesign their proposal? Do they need um, to downscale their proposal and stage it incrementally? Uh, basically having opening up a conversation with those landowners to encourage them to to move towards developing these sites or um, yeah explain why they're not currently developing them thank you so just another question from the chair so just to clarify without this amendment does staff mean that they can't currently do the things that was just raised by the staff member Without yeah. this amendment, can you um, not proceed forward? Would no, we, we could. We, this, the current um, strategy says that we would work with owners of the approved sites. So this, if this amendment doesn't get up, it doesn't stop us from Thank doing you. that. Thank you. But if the amendment got up, it would stop you. No. It would stop us in the instance where those sites 
were to be developed for aged care and had to clear remnant vegetation. In that, in that instance, it, it would stop us. Hmm. Yeah. But if it wasn't aged care, say they wanted to put something hmm. else there, would that stop us? Is it, is it just absolutely focused at aged care and only aged care with remnant rich yeah. yes. vegetation? Um, that's probably a question for the, for the for Council at Stockwell. It, Council Stockwell has taken an action that's in the draft plan that currently reads, work with the owners of sites approved for aged care <coughs> to ensure optimum outcomes are delivered in a timely manner. Rowena has just explained why we felt that this action was important to bring to the fore. We've got a, a housing need in our community. We've got sites approved, development <coughs> ready to deliver these housing needs. As officers and as council, we think we should understand why they're not being delivered mm. and what it is we can do to help get these ho these this housing type delivered for our community. That was the, the intention of this action. Mm -hmm. So, I, I go back to the word draft. Mm. So, if we approved this, um, nothing's going to happen until this goes to community consultation, mm. then it in, um, goes to the state for a state test and it comes back for another <coughs> consultation process and if any amendments are made. Um, so, so what I'm saying is a draft. So potentially could, um, could this amendment have the effect of achieving the outcome you just sought, which is telling these guys step up, provide the housing, otherwise if this gets approved, um, you, you may lose that opportunity. Um, question, this is simply a draft, if it gets approved or not approved. It has no, so no effect in law. Um, yes, uh, this is a draft. It's a draft housing strategy. Just need to clarify that it's not a planning scheme change. So it doesn't need to go to the state government, doesn't need state sign off. This is a council strategy. Okay. It's, it's your, it needs to be decided and, and ratified at this table. This doesn't require um, sign-off from state yeah. um, government. Okay. This will inform changes to the planning scheme that will come subsequently. So yes, it's a draft. None of this is going to be actioned, although we are working in this space already. We are working with you know housing providers. Um, you know, we, developments are getting approved. You know, there's things happening in this space at the moment. Um, but the intention is that it goes out for consultation. Yeah, yeah. It then comes back to council for um, final sign-off before it's then formally implemented and <coughs> we, we, we take action under it. Yeah. I have a, a question perhaps for the mover of the, the amendment, uh, and that is, um, does, does Councillor Stockwell also intend to move a similar uh, prov uh, proviso to providers of social or community housing? Are we only going to advocate and partner with them, providing there's no removal of remnant vegetation? And if not, why not? Oh, very simple, no. Um, the, 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 we, this particular action deals with three specific approvals. One of them is 16 years old and proposes clearing remnant, remnant vegetation of state environmental significance. <coughs> if you want staff to go and do everything, that Rowena said they'd be doing, to bring forward that clearing of that vegetation, that state environmental significance, that priority habitat, don't vote for this amendment. If you do want staff to go out there and bring forward that development to clear the land, to, to wipe out the glossy black feed trees, stay with the staff recommendation. Question for staff. Are there other blocks of land that perhaps um, we're looking at for social and community housing that has remnant vegetation on the state map? that may be cleared as a result of this, if this strategy proceeds, or the, the development that's intended to be facilitated by this develop, this strategy proceeds. Uh, through the chair, um, what this strategy does is um, seek to provide, um, the Mayor said it, you know, everything's on the table. It's going to take us to look at everything. So, and you know, we're inviting to community housing providers to come forward. We're inviting the development industry to come forward. 
Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a strategy that should see us out for the next 10 years. Uh, so potentially, yes. Um, does it specifically identify sites um, that have remnant vegetation in it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, but does it, like I said, you know, say we, there are a range of opportunities we need to look at. There's a range of housing needs we have. Um, we've got, you know, come and talk to us about those things. So potentially, yes, um, but not specifically. Okay. So perhaps a, a question again for Brian. Brian, if there was a social and community housing project proposed for land that has remnant vegetation on it, would you also be seeking a similar restriction on staff's work, work partnering with or advocating for those providers? Any future site that comes up that hasn't got planning approval would have to go through the Noosa Plan 2020. I'm confident that the provisions within the Noosa Plan 2020 will take these issues into consideration. The only ones that we don't have to consider <coughs> Noosa Plan 2020 is those that have got historic approvals. I have a question. Uh, I guess it's to Councillor Stockwell. He wrote the um, amendment here today. Is this about addressing land banking in the Shire? Uh, no. Within the wording, you're talking about specific sites. How come you haven't included them in your wording when you're directly talking about the site with the Blue Care development? The the action as stated in the draft housing strategy took that approved aged care sites. Uh, the development approval over the uh, Grass Tree Court has two different sites. Um, as I hope this has clarified, I've got no problem with staff um, working and partnering to bring timely development of the cleared site. Thank you. Um, Councillor Drusevich and Councillor Stock are the only two who have spoken to this amendment. Um, no, only two who have. Yeah. Would, would anyone else at the table like to speak to this amendment? Councillor um, Lonston. I will speak to this amendment. I'm going to approve it because I really want this to be considered as part of our community consultation. I'd like to hear what the community thinks about um, the amendment. Um, this is a huge body of work and thank you, Kim and Rowena. It's a huge body of work and it's got some serious implications um, for our Shire. And, you know, when I entered council, I think what I learned very early on is we've got to consider short-term, medium-term, long-term consequences of all of our decisions. I'm looking 20 years down the track. Um, we are at council with, with a conscience and this is a social investment. But I think there is a danger sometimes to, <coughs> to have housing, just to have housing at all costs. Um, we need to understand the social implications, the environmental implications of all our decisions. Um, and again, I go back to what I said earlier when I supported the amendment, um, <coughs> that we can't forget who we are and what we value. Um, so I, I'm going to approve this and I'm hoping the community <coughs> can help us um, with the answer. Thank you. Thanks, Uh, to Councillor Stockwell, <clears throat> so you're confident that this is not giving false hope to the people that want to, that want to stop the grass tree development from going forward. I'm confident that all this does is indicate to staff who we want to partner with and on what sites. I'm <coughs> confident it's saying that we don't want to do more than we have to statutorily under the Planning Act in terms of other sites that may have existing approvals for aged care sites that require the clearing of revenue vegetation. It's not, we're not saying we're not discharging our statutory responsibility, what we're saying is we don't want staff to go and take an extra uh, effort to focus on those sites or that site or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to support the motion, but I'm very worried that it's going to derail the, um, the, the incredible positive intent and all the, the, the masterful things that are in this, um, the, the, this, this 
just going out for consultation. And I'm also, as I just was, am, am worried that this will pull the grass tree court situation yeah. into the limelight and, and derail, yeah, good conversations, good feedback. But, uh, but just the same, it's already here, whether it's, whether it's in it or not, people are going to be talking about it. So I suppose that's from Lynn. Thank you, Look, um, Council Wigner's right. This has turned this um, house, talk about the housing strategy into a, a targeted mm. approach uh, that's signalling to Blue Care what what we think our approach shall be on um, Grass Tree Court, mm. uh, and it raises the unintended expectation and question about is there going to be a similar obstacle to partnering and advocating with uh, social and community <coughs> uh, housing providers that may be involve land which has remnant vegetation on. Um, there are protections under the Act and the planning scheme, but there are also rights uh, for property owners to clear remnant vegetation, unfortunately. So uh, I'm going to support it, but um, this the inordinate amount of time that we've spent on it here is, is sort of a bit of a testament to how, uh, testament to the amount of thought that went into it, which was um, probably done at the last minute. And um, but I appreciate what Councillor Stock was trying to do. It's using this opportunity to make a statement about Blue Care, which, if we support this, it's a statement of this council about how we propose to uh, approach our partnership. Will approach any application with Blue Care uh, that we may receive in the, into the future. But um, I would like to echo Councillor Wegner's um, view that there's a lot of great work in the housing strategy, mm. and um, hopefully there'll be more debate around the content of the strategy more broadly. Thank you, Councillor Wilkie. Councillor Wilkie, Yes, um, thank you. Um, look, this is challenging. I'm challenged here because. Um, you know, like what Councillor um, Thomas said and Councillor Frank reiterated, um, you know, to me, this has sideswiped what the expectation that we were going to go into a positive look at, you know, housing strategies and engage in the community on this. Some way, I personally feel like <coughs> we haven't remained on our focus today. I think there was other mechanisms and ways that we could address this without um, putting it in this, um, make an amendment on this today. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that this is something I support. Um, you know, when I go to ask questions, um, I think that they should be open-ended questions, that we let community make their own um, decisions without guidance from us. I'm, I'm satisfied that on page 27 of 46 that the A6.4.4 work with the owners of sites approved for aged care to ensure optimum outcomes are delivered in a timely manner um, fits the requirement of this community engagement and what's being putting out. I think it's up to the community to, to have an open-ended question or a document where they can choose what they want to do. Um, I'm not going to support this. I don't think that um, this is the time and the place to um, put this out there. And especially if I was Blue Care or someone that's partnering with council already, you know, is this the way that we want this debated out here now? Um, you know, I don't know if staff have spoken to them or what's happening. I just feel that it's limiting. I feel that we need a broader, wider, more open and transparent dialogue with our community, um, with our drilling down to specifics. I feel that what the staff put here in the report was adequate to, um, for the community to use their own intent, their own um, thought process and how they want to approach um, this consultation and what they would like to say. So I'm not supporting this today um, in its current wording. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I do um, echo what Councillor Finzel said that there and Councillor Wigner and Wilkie we'll that um, we have been a little bit sidetracked um, today. Today is a great day and uh, there is a huge amount of work and a great amount of work um, in this document. 
uh, I'm, I'll support this on the basis that this is purely a draft. I think that's what we have to keep remembering. This is a draft going out to our community. Um, I'll be interested to hear the feedback from the community and hear what they specifically, specifically have to say. Um, Councillor Finsler, you will be happy to know that only myself and Councillor Lorkey have spoken to the original motion, so there is five other councillors who I hope really do speak to the, uh, the full body of the work, which is our um, draft housing strategy this afternoon. We still have some time. So um, I will be supporting this, but as I said, it's a draft, uh, and I'll be interested to hear what our community have to say. Thank you. Uh, I'll I'll yeah, I will close, and I totally accept the argument that we've had a long debate and this wasn't intended, and I, I certainly also reiterate that I hope this doesn't become a, 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 a tangent where we, people go down. It's not the intent. The intent is to be really clear about what we want staff to do in this arena. The intent is to say, yes, we want to partner with sites that don't have a significant constraint. And I will respond to Councillor Drew, who said the community's had their chance. They've had their say and it's true. On one of these sites, the community last had a chance to say in 2006, and every five years it senses about 30% of our population changes over. So you can do a math. So how many of the locals had to deal with that input? So I do want to be very specific about where staff a lot of their time. And yes, it was last night. I saw it on my second reading of the strategy. I picked it up. And because it's something that I feel very strongly about, I feel obliged that it, it should state what I think is the right approach. Thank you, Mr. Stockwell. I will put amendment number three to a vote, all in favour. That is Councillors Wegner, Stockwell, Wilkie, Lawrence. Is that this one here? Sorry. This one, amendment three. Oh, we just talked about it. <coughs> uh, against? Councillor Drew Stitch and Councillor Finzel. And I was um, for it by name. Yes, thank you. I'm just going to hand over the chair. Um, yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, do we have uh, someone else would like to speak to the original motion or no, move an move amendment? amendment. Um, yeah. I'd like to move an amendment. Um, <coughs> amendment E. Um, E, that council explore the feasibility of establishing a community land trust in Anissa Shire as a way of delivering affordable housing solutions and then report back to council with recommendations. Happy to second. Um, I'm going to keep this quite brief um, and I'll start off with what, what I'm intending. Um, conversation here today is about putting everything on the table. Let's leave no stone unturned. Um, so for that reason, I've thrown this into the conversation because I think we actually need to consider and explore alternate <coughs> ways of delivering um, housing to our community. Um, what was raised in conversation today around this table is that for a lot of people in our community, um, there may not never be an opportunity for them to purchase a home. Um, CLTs or Community Land Trust is possibly the one real chance for our most vulnerable to own land. Um, but it's not own land, sorry, own a house. Um, I'm not an expert in Community Land Trust and that's why I've asked and worded my amendment um, that I request that Council actually seek some information and come back to council with um, some information on community land trust. I know that other councils down in Byron Bay and Port Phillip, um, the CEO informed me just a little while ago with Sundays also have community land trusts <coughs> um, and, um, and they're working. And overseas in the United States and UK, they're actually addressing our issues of homelessness and domestic violence. So again, in the spirit of let's leave no stone unturned, um, I hope that you will support this amendment. If you want to ask me some questions about Community Land Trust, I've got a printout here, um, but I may even ask if Scott could perhaps stand up and just give an overview of um, his understanding of Community Land Trust. I, he, he'll probably do a better um, better job than I do, but I've been immersed in CLTs 
for a little bit of time and I just think it's an opportunity that at least we need to explore at the minimum. Mm. Um, Mayor, um, thank you, Council Lawrence. Look, the Community Land Trust is just another mechanism to be able to provide um, social and or affordable housing on council-owned land. Um, it would set separate, set, sit separate to the council. I, I think the question and, and the explore the feasibility, uh, and particularly before our council table, is does our council, um, how heavily do we become involved within social and affordable housing? Um, exploring the feasibility um, by our a strategic planning team gives us the ability to come back to council, have a fully informed position around that, but um, it does go to the spirit of what um, Councillor Lawrence has said, leave no stone unturned. Um, this is a crisis, and, and a crisis that needs to be addressed from all possible angles. <coughs> Um, so putting um, this particular amendment forward, um, I, I think Council Lawrence is wanting to be able to explore what the opportunities might be with council land that may be available and another mechanism in which affordable and social housing can be delivered, but it can also lead to a pathway to ownership as well too. So there's a number of elements to this. Um, and if this amendment um, is successful by the majority, um, our team will go away and as part of what we're delivering with the feedback and consultation on the draft scheme, we'll provide some advice around um, CLTs and, and what they can deliver. Thank you, Council Lawrence. <coughs> is there any mention of community land trusts anywhere in the housing draft housing strategy? And if not, um, is adding E on its own sufficient to explain to the community what a housing land trust is? Um, no, there, there isn't any mention of community land trust in the strategy at the moment. Um, the, as I understand it, the amendment is uh, an action for staff through the, by the CEO to explore the feasibility of the community land trust. Um, I'm going to go back to ABC and D then because I can't see it on my screen anymore. So, uh, you, simply, Councillor Drewswick, no, the, the strategy doesn't doesn't talk about a community land trust as it's currently stand. Just, just to clarify, Mr. CEO, by putting it as an E rather than a addition to A, it means that that particular action isn't one that's noted in the draft strategy that goes out to consultation. Is that correct? Thank you. That's why I had to go back to A, B, C, and D to see where it fit. Thank you. <coughs> Um, is there anywhere else that we know of any other councils that engage in community land trusts? I guess is my question here. Number one, number two is, uh, is there a reason why um, it wasn't in here, or what were your thoughts around that? Um, yeah. Scott, I want you yeah. might want to ask. Yeah, yeah thank you. We can take thank you. Um, it, it was noted in oh, um, the preamble from Council Lawrence that there are a number of councils, um, okay. and uh, uh, Council Lawrence spoke to me uh, about this particular amendment um, to be put before the meeting. I have had some experience in previous councils around that. Um, really, is, it's just another option for us to be able to look at. But uh, um, close to home for us, Byron Bay, um, there, there's a good community housing company, the Whit Sundays, that also utilise this particular um, model as well too. Um, so there are others out there that are using it and, and just something for us to be able to um, uh, look at okay. and um, put forward as uh, maybe potentially another way to help with social and affordable housing. Just a question, does community land trusts involve council delivering or providing community housing? Through, through the chair, Councillor Wilkie, it, it can. And That's that does then give us the, the, the situation where we, as this council, want to partner as opposed to deliver, but our component, our contribution is the land element, um, as opposed to us actually building or owning um, any, any particular homes. Um, so I think we need to be able to bring that paper back um, because it, it does provide another option for us. Um, our contribution is the land, um, those that develop above, um, and generally you would have a, a separate um, trustee or, or, or company that, that would sit over that, that would run that as a separate arm um, to the council. Is that a similar arrangement to what we're looking at doing under the scheme? That is perhaps uh, contributing land to and working in partnership with a provider to provide social housing? Through the chair council, yes, it's just another way of doing it. Um, but um, th this is a, a specific model that's been utilised in, in other councils and 
Um, Council Lawrence has, has asked um, if council officers can explore that, and, and if that's the view of the council, we'll absolutely explore that and bring more information back to the table. Kim, can I get to my second question? Um, just why wasn't that feature uh, in this? Did you think about it, or was it just an addition, or did you think we're covering it with, um, you know, looking at the various lands we have available and looking at the housing providers? Yeah, um, through, thanks, Mayor. Through, uh, I guess from an officer's perspective and the work that we've done and the connections that we have and our understanding of the community housing provider sector, um, it, was, it was our proposition or our recommendation to Council and the strategy that Council doesn't become a deliverer of housing um, so that we, that, we, that we focus on partnering with registered housing providers who are established to do, to do that. Um, and that council didn't need to step in to that space. There was a range of other roles council could have um, that that may not have been the most effective place for us to step in. So that was from the work we had done. Um, but there are a range of different models for delivering housing um, uh, that, you know, we've looked at a, a number of them. Um, you know, if council wishes us to explore um, alternative models, we're, we're happy to do that. Um, the CEO mentioned it's uh, another way to manage council land. Um, am I correct in understanding that perhaps it could also be a framework set up that if there was philanthropists wanting to donate land and weren't keen to give it to council, to give it straight to the Community Land Trust? Yeah. Um, through the Mayor, and, and absolutely, uh, Council Stockwell, that is another way that this can operate. And um, um, given we have a number of high net worths in, in, in this particular shire, that um, some philanthropic contribution of this cause would be very much welcomed. Okay. I'll support the amendment because uh, that was what I thought might be an interesting uh, road to go down. So just have a look and see is there, it can san cancel, facilitate some more housing options by creating a framework within which others can actually provide meaningful input in regard to you know, philanthropic donations of land, uh, you know, bequeaths, etc. Um, that then could be uh, you know, given to the community land trust as a title and they manage that for social housing and community housing in perpetuity. So I'm happy with that. E, as proposed. Thank you, Councillor Stockwell. Um, Under the current housing strategy, is there no capacity for Council to accommodate the donation of land for use uh, as social or community housing? Well, there's nothing in the strategy that would preclude that happening. No. I'll speak to the amendment. Look, I'm happy to support it as well. Um, I think it's just a shame that mention of community land trust wasn't included in the housing strategy for people to understand that it's something that, uh, that may be con uh, considered, but I'm happy for uh, uh, all of the options to be considered with regard to uh, um, land options, particularly if there is philanthropic uh, uh, um, uh, opportunities there to, uh, for people that may, uh, may want to uh, donate land to uh, community or social needs housing for the future. <coughs> yeah, look, I'm, I'm happy to support this as, as well. I, I just think, I'm just lamenting that it's these last minute ideas that pop up and we're only seeing them the first time at a table. Um, it really doesn't do the idea any justice. I don't think it's really good for uh, group decision making that we only see these things. We don't have an opportunity to discuss them or interrogate them in any depth. Um, but from what I understand, at this very superficial level around the, the table, the questioning we'll be able to do in this broader meeting about a much bigger question, um, I'm, I'm open to the idea of exploring uh, the feasibility of this idea. Um, I'm so happy this gives me the opportunity to put on my beret and say, <laughs> comrades, I'm all in favour of exploring uh, further um, looking into council um, providing opportunities for social housing and so forth. So, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to um, yeah, explore other opportunities. I think that's what we're all about. That's what we're here for today. So, yeah, I think it's great if we get everything on the table and make sure that we uh, leave no stone unturned. Thank you. Yeah, I'll support it too. As I said at the very beginning, everything's on the table. This is another string in our bow. So uh, I think all things should be looked at and I think gives the, the community an opportunity to uh, have their say as well. So I'm happy to support it. Thank you.
Um, I'll speak to it, and first, apologies that I have left it till last minute. I actually didn't know what it was called until some emails went to and fro last night on another matter, um, and some work that Brian Stockwell did in regards to finding um, potential land sites made me do some research, and then boom, the name came out, the Community Land Trust, I knew it was some type of land trust. Um, I think it's better in than not in, um, and the amendment seeks information and feasibility for my own benefit as well as the benefit of council. I do want to point out that um, a community land trust is under community control. That's the main difference. It's going to be run by a not, not-for-profit, so council set up an entity, but it's actually run by a not-for-profit community organisation. So the community actually controls the vision, what it's going to look like. Um, I also want to note, uh, I'm just reading this great article about um, community housing, which only provide rentals. Um, <coughs> that just read straight from here. The problem is that when people are no longer eligible for the rental housing, they have nothing else to move into. So what that refers to is that when a family member is offered a promotion, or exceeds the income threshold, normally they've got 12 months to go and find somewhere else to live. And the problem in that is that it doesn't incentivise people to actually go for career promotions or better themselves. Um, and if they do, then the, the issue is where do they go to next? Um, so apologies for last minute, but um, it may be if I didn't throw it in, it may have been a missed opportunity. So thank you for supporting the um, amendment. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. We may have made one call to vote. All in favour, that is unanimous. Thank you, Karen. That would be part of the original amendment number five. So I'm going to do the amendment, um, uh, which is approved in this charge draft housing strategy with the changes noted below. And number two, that the wording in section 6.6.1 be amended to read, advocate the state government for improved sustainability measures for all housing to reduce energy consumption and cost to households, which is the existing action, and to add to it, and to amend the planning regulations to enable councils to set their own requirements in regard to the built form requirements of a planning scheme. I'll second that one. So, I do say, um, I have raised this numerous times before, so it's not you. Um, this is an action in the draft strategy that's for advocacy. Um, currently, the state government has a, a position that says anything in the Australian Building Code can't be put in planning schemes, which is, in my opinion, absolute nonsense from a professional planning perspective. Uh, a community has to uh, decide what it wants out of its built form. A community, uh, the Australian Building Code sets minimum standards and they're currently being looked at to increase those minimum standards in regard to the issues here. Uh, but certainly the Noosa community, I regularly get why aren't these things in our planning scheme. Why can't we require solar panels? Why can't we require uh, better designs? And the answer was we tried to, and the state government said no because they have this <coughs> archaic concept of the Australian Building Code being all that is needed. It's not a concept I support, and I think if we're going to advocate, we need to advocate for the systems change as well as the outcomes we're trying to get to. I'll happily support this for the same reasons that Councillor Stockwell alluded to and the fact that <coughs> one of the things that the building code doesn't do is it doesn't require solar orientation of homes. Affordable housing is not only about the cost of housing at its purchase, it's about the cost of housing for its life. And if you don't do things to uh, reduce any energy consumption and cost to households, it's a false economy at the beginning that, uh, that you're buying cheap and that uh, because it just goes on and on and on for the life of the life of your house that you're you're paying uh, paying more. So if we don't consider these things up front, and the state government needs to be dragged kicking and screaming to the table to uh, to, to consider it instead of being in the planning uh, in the uh, in the building codes, then I think we have a role to play here to advocate to the state government that they need to change their attitude. <coughs> Draft housing strategy to talk about housing affordability, social housing, roof accommodation. Is this the right place for uh, this amendment, in your opinion, Kieran Rollier? Mayor, I might just say 
it would be best if staff put in not into the debate. Um, uh, the opinion of the plans can be provided, but I would just say that um, this is starting to bring staff onto the yeah. yeah. I have a question. Um, do councils have the capacity to, s to set their own requirements in regard to built form in a planning scheme? Um, elements of built form such as height and setbacks and site cover, GFA. Yep. Yeah. And then again, I, I have a question for Council Stockwell. If councils can already set their own requirements in regard to built form of a planning scheme, what is the purpose of this amendment? And can more detail be provided so we all understand what the thrust of it is? Well, certainly, I thought it was um, not necessarily needed for completing, but it's in regard to reducing energy consumption and cost to households. Um, it's about the sustainability measures. Mm. If you recall, Councillor, uh, we had a whole range of sustainability requirements in the first draft of the planning scheme, um, uh, including things about uh, our passive solar design, about active requiring uh, solar panels on the roof. It's about climate action, um, and it's in that context. Uh, it's about increasing that. Okay. So, to set their own sustainability requirements in regard to the built form. Um, I'm happy to add that in if well, the secondary is in the community. Yeah. Well, we have the amendment before us. We can, if we change it too much, we'll be coming into dangerous territory of what we did last time. So we want to vote on this um, one. And would the seconder be happy if we put the word sustainability in front of own requirement, own sustainability requirements or? I think there's a word sustainability already existing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have, have no objection Energy to saving, adding, uh, the adding of the word sustainability before requirements. Yeah. 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 And the, the, the standing board is actually required it, it, it to be a, a general decision. A general, majority everybody everybody agrees. Yes, anyone not happy. Um, can I, there's something I'd like to add if we're changing things. Um, can I just make a comment then. Um, is it a question? Or is well, a okay. Well, I just wanted to get in before we start changing because I do support the overall amendment because I do think that the building code has a big effect on you know applications that are coming before us. But what I'd like to look at is that it's about all abilities access because I think that's covered under the building code as well. And that does um, align with our, you know, um, accessibility of housing as part Would of... Would you like that to form part of this motion? Well, I think so, because I think if we're looking at advocating to the state, we want to do the broader... Point, access. point of order, Madam Chair. Uh, I believe that um, uh, a minor change here of the, adding a word sustainability is in keeping, but anything further the Council would like to do is her own option to create a further amendment to anything here, or, or any other provision within the draft. Okay, sure. Yep, thank Councillor Joe and Brian, the two have spoken to this amendment number five. Would anyone else like to speak to it? I'll speak to it. And what I'm going to say is that it's a human right to live in a house. But the Human Rights Act actually says, goes a little bit further. It says that it's not just about having a house, but it's about adequate standards of living. Mm -hmm. And I think this <coughs> amendment speaks to that really clearly, that we should be shifting towards more energy effective, better quality homes, um, and homes for everyone. So I'm happy to support this. Yeah, I'm happy to support it. It's entirely consistent with what the yeah. staff recommendation was in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, well, I'm just waiting to vote on this and then form to the next one. Do you want to make yeah. a comment? Well, I'll, I'll just quickly speak to it. And then we'll vote up and then go to the next one. Yes, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, I, I think this is uh, largely an overlap of 6.6. Um, housing is well designed and adds to safety, security, and well-being of residents. This takes it perhaps a step further. I'll, I'll support this, but I, I think that we're straying from what we actually were here to do today in the, in the past. Um, this is this is something that we've been wanting to do for a very long time, and maybe every every opportunity we get, we put this this language into anything that comes before us as as being consistent. 
um, so I'll support it. But I'm hoping that, the, again, this doesn't dilute what we're trying to uh, achieve here. Because this is the big picture. Of course, we, we, have, we have the architects coming to us and bringing to us we want to have, have a better um, outcomes for, for development and the, uh, the design strategies and so forth. And here we are putting a design strategy and things that we really want into this. But we also want to see lots of public consultation. Ah, no. Okay. Council Silver's eyes. Um, firstly, I think Council of Jerusalem hit the nail on the head. And why I don't necessarily see it as going off track as Councillor Wigner thinks. We're dealing with a strategy about making housing more affordable to people. There is clear evidence, in fact, the current debate on the Australian Code has done cost benefit analysis on it, raising the star rating of yeah. houses in New South Wales and Victoria and I think Perth. Mm -hmm. And over a 10 year period in doing what we're asking here actually saves hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the problem we have at the moment is if we don't address the systemic in issues, stopping councils trying to get to the best outcomes in this strategy, then we're <coughs> always going to be seen to be the acceptor of state government decree and sometimes as we've been hearing in the press, sometimes their position is affected by lobbyists. And there are a particular set of lobbyists who don't like painting schemes having a <coughs> say on sustainability requirements. And that's why it's so important. It's about addressing a systemic constraint on achievable, affordable living and housing in our shire. <laughs> That's unanimous, thank you, Kat. Councillor Finzel, there's an amendment right there with your name on it. Would you like to move that? Do you want to tell me what you want to write about? Um, sure. So, advocate the state government for improved sustainability measures for all housing to provide all abilities access and to reduce energy consumption. Do we need a uh, question? Do we need energy consumption? Or that's not even in the paragraph above? It's sustainability. I think it's a meaning. It was in there, it's energy consumption. It was already in there, I didn't change. It was in the original number five. And we need to add sustainability in there too. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry. You're just amending the amendment. Mm. Oh. You're just adding the words into the amendment. Oh, no, sustainability is in there. Oh, sorry. I could apologize. Do we need to put it in relation to the building code or not? <coughs> See the, 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 can I answer your question? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see This up. one deals with very similar territory uh, uh, with the one that I moved in 6.61. The one that actually deals with the National Construction Code and Building Code is 6.7.1. And I wonder whether it's an amendment that adds another dot point there is or isn't. Uh, it talks about uh, more financially and environmentally sustainable housing such as passive design, less reliance on power, water capture. Uh, probably fits in there as well. Um, well, can I just, um, well, just to clarify, because I don't know if ac all abilities access to housing for the life of the infrastructure of that, it will be affordable because it will you know, that build for like handrails and wheelchair access and all that goes into the initial build. So over the cost of the life, there is money saved there and it's not an add-on further down the track. I guess the question through the chair to the staff is, do we need to actually uh, put an actual, um, include the section of the building code that addresses that? Oh, I, I don't think we need to be that specific. The, the, the primary... Um, purpose of this action is advocacy. Mm. So um, I don't think we need to be, it is, we couldn't be at the, here at the table at, at the moment anyway. We probably have to do a bit of um, research on that. But I don't think it's necessary because this is essentially about advocate, advocacy. Okay, thank you. Yes, that how would you like to read? Um, just a question back then to Council Stockwell. Do you think that covers the intent of it? 
I think your amendment is, I think staff can interpret mm -hmm. it. It sort of adds another dimension of sustainability um, outside of what was there originally, but I don't think it's that confusing. I'm, I'm quite happy to support yeah. it. Um, Kim, you're happy with that as it stands? You're not? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. And we'll second it for the Councillor Fenzel. Councillor Stockwell, thank you. Can you just um, I think we've pretty well covered it all. It's just um, making sure that while we're here at the table today, we leave no stone unturned. Um, I think it's great to be in a position where we can advocate back to state government. I'm sure our staff and people already do this, but just to secure that in the wording today, I think it's it's um, really beneficial to um, include it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fincher. number six. Um, I just wish we could take the, this amendment and the previous one and retrospectively go back in time, put them <laughs> into our regulations, and then um, deliver them to Stockwell so that the development that's come going in over there reflects these um, aspirations. Council Wilkie and myself have spoken to, which seems a long time ago. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, would anyone like to speak to the original now motion? The I'll speak, Madam Chair. I'd like, future. I'd like to acknowledge the work that the staff have put in to get us to this point of having a draft housing strategy to put out for community consultation. I. Await, eagerly await the, uh, the input uh, of our community and I hope that people actually take the time to read the document and see what its intent is, what the, uh, the, the, the desired future direction for housing and housing needs within, the, uh, uh, within our community are that this, direct, that, that this document uh, leads, us, leads us to. Uh, I think the measures that have been um, uh, documented are many, various, uh, and opportunistic uh, with uh, the land uses that, uh, that we have, constrained and challenged that we are. But uh, it, it, looks at, uh, it looks at where we may be able to uh, meet the needs that are being, you know, that, that aren't being met at the moment and to advocate to the state for the elements that we think uh, um, may need further, further work. Uh, some of those have been brought up in the amendments, like sustainability measures. Now, it's an important part to remember, again, with, uh, with regard to housing affordability, it's not just about the cost of the house, it's about the, the ongoing uh, elements there. It's about uh, uh, you know, giving, making sure that people have access and, and options with, uh, with regard to access and all the rest of it, that the amendments have been, uh, have been uh, amended to. But uh, the work and the time and the, uh, uh, the, um, the housing reference group in particular uh, is something that I, uh, I support because we've been de down this road before. We've been able to deliver great solutions when we work in collaboration and cooperation with other entities. So I hope that the uh, community embrace the housing draft strategy uh, and we get a lot of positive feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it, it seems... Um, we're well, once again well ahead of the times and ahead of the curve when it comes to um, big social issues, big planning, big environmental issues, in this case social housing issues, um, because you're ahead of this and all of a sudden we've got a change of government. And not that I follow federal politics, but it appears as though our, our current government that, that, that has come in will be very supportive of social housing. So being ahead of the curve may really help us get this funding and, and get, put, put, get these uh, wheels to hit the ground. Um, also, at first I was challenged because there's not a lot of price tags and, and costs involved, but in retrospect I feel um, these, are, these are very aspirational goals and um, that it's better to keep any sort of costs out of the arguments because this is a visionary statement where we want to go and, um, and it's best for our community, for NUSA in the very, very long term and you don't want to put a price tag and, and, and confuse again the arguments thinking about price of, of things rather than thinking of a vision of where we need to go. Because when, when I came to Noosa, again, and like most like Brian will say, 
you know, we, we stayed in a very cheap place. You know, we, we came and then we put down roots. And it's, it's the young people that we hope to come here, put down roots in Usa, and become leaders like we are here today. And, uh, and I think that's very important to, to open those doors for them. So this is, this is really terrific. And it's a step towards that direction. Thank so you, I'm Jim. absolutely supportive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start really general about Australian values and housing, and you'll have to be a little bit um, uh, generous. And now I'm going to go down to some of the specifics. Now, I mentioned before that the majority of people who are likely to engage are going to say it's not council business. State, federal government matter. The world today says it's everyone's business. And I'm going to get people to start thinking about what makes Noosa different by nature. And so when we talk about the population gap, it's about our aspiration to be a sustainable community. And you can't be a sustainable community if a large proportion of your population is in housing insecurity. We know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the most basic physiological need is shelter. I'm going to go further than that. Mention federal government. We can think about some of the really inspirational um, quotes from prime ministers. Bob Hawke, 83, any boss who sacks anyone for not turning up today is a bum. Underlying that is Australian culture. We talk about uh, Whitlam in 75. May God save the Queen because nothing will save the Governor General. <laughs> eh? And just to be um, party non-political, John Howard during the gun debate, he said, um, we have done something that will send a signal to people all around this country that ours is not a gun culture, ours is a culture of peaceful cooperation. And then recently, the one that will stick with me, our new Prime Minister standing up in his acceptance speech and said, words to the effect, who would have thought Housing Commission kid with a single mum becoming the Prime Minister. Mm. It's because he had a public house to bring him up that he, and he, of course, he had an education that was free that allowed him to get to the highest office in this country. Housing is the most fundamental thing we can do to improve the life um, performance of all our young people. So, in that saying of what happened in the 60s and the 70s is about Australian as an egalitarian society and that's what we have to think about in this strategy. We have to think about some big picture issues that have been pushed aside during the Thatcherism era. We need to think about what are we offering to those people who are not yet in the housing market. We're also going to get people who are going to look at this and saying about their negative experiences with public housing in the past. So where I grew up, I was a housing commission kid with a single mum and I had a look on Google Maps and that Housing Commission estate was a whole suburb measuring about a kilometre by a kilometre. <coughs> We're not proposing that. We're proposing small community housing initiatives that integrate people from various walks of life together to achieve a cohesive community. We get other people that come from the home country and their thoughts go immediately to the um, Liverpool riots and the big high rise. It's not about cramming all people of one social demographic into a small area. It's about spreading, it's about achieving. Uh, so we might have ha council workers with hospitality workers, with single women over 50, with young people, and with others who find it difficult or impossible to enter the housing market in the private estate. And why should we get involved? We should get involved because the housing market is imperfect. And the level of imperfection over the last two years is the largest in Queensland's history. We've never experienced this sort of a bubble. So, to me, it is about a very modern approach to housing. And to me, it's really important that we go down this track. And now the specifics, as mentioned. It's really good for me to sit here and look at the progression of these issues. In some ways, I like, I'm a bit of a Nike man, I go out there and do it, but the, the director has had the process where we've done the housing needs assessment to create the data and we've now going to Australia and consulting it. 
actually when we go out, I think it's probably the day we go out to consultation, will be three years to this date that I wrote a letter to the CEO saying, here's the top three pieces of council land we should be looking at for social housing. That was July 10th, from memory, 2019. And since then, we look at the issues that arose. So we look at action 6.5.5 about secondary dwelling definitions. This is one argument we have with the state, and one that, you know, that I've, we've been fortunate that I gave a briefing to our local member, uh, Sandy Bolton, and she's gone into the state and prosecuted and tenderised this ground and came up with a sort of half solution from their perspective. But I think we should do it head on, that we do see that secondary dwellings, as we initially envisioned in the first draft of the planning scheme, is a way to provide low cost housing. And that if we do it in any other way that relay our subdivision, it means it won't be low cost, it means we'll have two McMansions sitting side by side. And we look at this action 6.5.12, use cancel land and partnership with housing cooperatives. And I said, I've done a bit of work on this. After a year nearly of waiting, I uh, actually went down and did my own capability suitability report on those three top blocks. And I, I engaged Coast of Bay, one of the housing, and they, you know, back in July 2020, said we'd really be keen to work in partnership. And that's been developing since then. And there's another one there, Kuya Street, one of the other three. Now, this is a large <coughs> lot of council land that's constrained, and we tried once again in the, the, the planning scheme uh, to put it to potential housing uses. And because it's outside the urban footprint, we, they didn't allow us. Um, so that is an area that we need to look at. There are going to be some justifications for looking at minor tweaks to the urban footprint to allow uh, the sort of social and community housing that meets our demographic need. 6.541, we were saying we're going to move with faith-based and community organisations. And we looked at, you know, the first example of that is just around the corner with U-Turn providing um, tiny houses as a transitional move out of uh, emergency into real life. And it's something that you know we, we can look at a range of different churches and other communities uh, uh, own land that could be doing it. So it's a really good one. And you know another one, simple things like during the, the peak of COVID, we had the problem of um, backpackers being absent <coughs> and the need for rooming accommodation. And we just have to realise that there, there's a whole lot of different living arrangements out there. And the shared housing model and the rooming accommodation, they're all things where we meet the needs of particular demographics and that's what the housing strategy does. It does it by a range of partnerships and what hasn't received much uh, focus is there's some really key change to the planning scheme that we're proposing and um, you know, staff have been working with uh, <coughs> the state government to try and make sure those planning scheme amendments that fit with where the, the state government is currently thinking and certainly I take every opportunity um, to get into their minds that um, we do need to be innovative, and I think there are some innovative solutions in our planning scheme uh, changes. I do think it is uh, not wielding a big stick. It's making uh, more incentive and more inducement for developers, and particularly on large sites like uh, out at the Noosa Business Centre, to actually provide social housing as part of the mix. So I'm really looking forward to the consultation. I'm going to repeat, um, we really need to ask people who are really well settled in their house and, and, and desire, you know, nothing to change in their neighbourhood, um, to think about <coughs> if you were once again 1835, like Council Tom, if I was that young 21 year old still living in a Bondwood caravan with no power and water on McKinnon Drive, what would I like to see this council do? And I think that's the way to approach it. Thank you, Councillor Stockwell. Uh, Councillor Pinsel and Councillor Ronston are the two who have not been spoken. Um, okay, our job as a local government is to fight for public housing. Like I said before, it's a human right to live in a house. Our role as local government is to partner with the right registered housing providers, people that are experts in the build and management of affordable housing. Our job is to incentivise private developers to deliver accessible and social housing. Our and also to explore all housing models such as community land trusts. Our challenge as decision makers is to ensure that in our rush to provide for housing that we don't forget to build communities and that we protect neighbourhood character and the values that make Noosa different. 
I look forward to the feedback <coughs> and encourage everyone in the community to participate um, during our consultation period. Let us know if we've done too little or too much, um, whether we're doing enough to create an environment for businesses to succeed, and that includes our tourism and hospitality businesses that are in need of, of staff. Um, and whether we're doing enough for our most vulnerable, our disabled and our workers to ensure that changes are going to occur in the appropriate places. Small changes in residential zones, larger, more substantial changes in business activity zones such as Noosa Junction, Tawantan Business District and Noosa Civic. And if we haven't done enough, tell us. Tell us what needs to be done because we are all listening. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, and a big thank you to all the staff who've done such a magnificent job. And um, over the last however long that's been, um, we really appreciate and um, value your contribution. And everyone else who's had um, something along the way to be involved. Um, the Noosa Draft Shire Council Housing Strategy to me is really exciting because it is a strong commitment to action by the councillors, CEO and staff, ensuring we play our role with all tiers of government in seeking the support and feedback of our community in reaching its objectives, in addressing the housing crisis and ensuring that we live a flourishing and thriving future where we all benefit. Adequate housing was raised as part of the um, standard of living in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in um, the International Covenant, Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. The right to adequate housing should be seen as the right to live somewhere in security, peace and dignity. And I think we've all covered that today where you know, our aspiration, our vision and our goal is to work together collectively to bring all those to um, fruition in our community. Adequate housing, as we discussed today, must provide more than four walls and a roof. These elements are just as important and fundamental as the basic supply of availability to include the security of tenure, availability of services, affordability, habitability, accessibility, location and cultural adequacy. I think that's really exciting that this um, council and our community has come together today to reach up really high with a future vision and an attempt to tick those boxes and the staff has come along for the journey and we're all enthusiastic that we can leave a world where we've done our best to um, close the gap. The World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report in 2021 identified the COVID-19 pandemic has raised new barriers, including building um, inclusivity and prosperous, prosperous economic <coughs> economies and societies. We have been fundamentally changed by COVID and the pre-existing gender gaps have amplified in the crisis. And when we talk about housing, you know, we want to ensure that women and children are kept safe. I'm not excluding any gender in this conversation, but it is up there. It is in the top issues that we've got to face moving forward in our community and how do we do that? And it's so wonderful to be involved in an organisation where we can get all our thinking caps on, we can all come together, we can all debate and we can all work really hard to provide a quality of life where we all prosper. Um, people experiencing homelessness face violations of a wide range of human rights. A person who finds themselves in a position where there is no access to adequate housing may be facing violations of the right to education, the right to liberty and security of the person, the right to social security, the right to freedom from discrimination, the right to vote and many more. I'm really excited and passionate to be part of a group of individuals and a community that wants to see that our rights and our um, quality of living is really um, progressed to a point where we can say that we all live <coughs> to the best of our ability in providing for everyone, including our most vulnerable. 
On 16th of July 2020, I raised a proposed motion at a special meeting, which was unanimous, unanimously supported, as the Mayor alluded to. It was to monitor over the next two years the effectiveness of the provisions of the Noosa Plan 2020, enabling the delivery of housing choice and affordability to meet the diverse needs in the community. Specifically for housing those in our community on low incomes, with special needs, or in identified groups in need of community and affordable housing. And today here, I, item number G, was to provide a report back to Council on monitoring program, including any associated recommended amendments to the Noosa plan to strengthen the provision towards these outcomes. And here we are today, we're all on that journey together and celebrating those outcomes and including our community for feedback along the way. It is a statement to the community of a committed council to being part of the housing solution. In so doing, I believe this vision to create an exclusive Noosa community, inclusive Noosa community, where everyone has access to safe, secure housing that they can afford regardless of age, mobility, household structure or budget. Thereby promoting principles of UNESCO, man and the biosphere to ensure we collectively <coughs> and collaboratively lead good lives in a framework that is resilient and help promote thriving communities for a bright and sustainable future for generations to come. And of course we have to have a quote because we always need a quote. I'm surprised the mayor didn't bring one or oh, I might have missed it. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> And as I said back in July, when I first raised the amendments, I quoted Gandhi, um, the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable. Thank you. Okay. Council Vinsel, I looked at that quote this morning and I thought of you and I thought I'm not going to use it. Um, but I'm actually going to finish on another one. Um, Councillor Stockwell talked about some of our Prime Ministers um, <coughs> further across the shores and, and talk about a former American president, Harry Truman, who makes the point, a society will be judged by how it treats its weakest members. Mm. Uh, this strategy, this document, is something that we should all be very proud of. We are firmly putting our money where our values lie, and we're not mm. just talking the talk, but we're walking the walk. Now we need your help, our community. We need your involvement, your feedback, and your input. I'd encourage you all to take up the baton and join us in the challenges ahead. <coughs> Together, we can make the changes necessary for the good of all. Thank you. And I'll put the resolution to a vote. All in favour? Unanimous. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Sia. Thank you, Kim.